All motherboards are equipped with input-output bus slots. These are typically located on the bottom rear of the motherboard. These bus slots are also called expansion slots because these slots are used to expand the capability of the computer. For instance, if the motherboard doesn't already have a built-in sound card, then you can add a sound card by inserting one into one of these bus slots, giving your computer the ability to produce sound. Or, let's say the motherboard doesn't have enough USB ports to suit your needs, well then, you can add a USB expansion card in one of the bus slots to add more USB ports. A modern bus type today is called PCI, which stands for Peripheral Component Interconnect. PCI has been around since 1993 and was a standard bus slot for modern motherboards until PCI Express came out, which we'll talk about shortly. PCI slots are much faster compared to ISA slots, with a data path of 32 or 64 bits, with speeds ranging from 133 to 533 megabytes per second. They are also about half the physical size and length of the ISA slot. As computers got faster, a lot of people were using their computers for higher-end graphics applications such as gaming. And as computers became more graphically oriented, the PCI slot was lagging in delivering computer graphics data. For this purpose, the AGP slot was developed. AGP stands for Accelerated Graphics Port, and it was created to assist in accelerating 3D computer graphics. One of the main reasons why AGP is faster than PCI is that AGP has its dedicated pathway to the processor. Unlike PCI, the AGP port is only used for a video card and is usually brown. PCI Express is the latest version of bus slots. It's faster than its predecessor, with speeds up to 4 GB per second. And unlike standard PCI, which transfers data in parallel, PCI Express transfers data in serial. Transferring data in serial is much faster than parallel because serial data is transferred in packets. PCI Express was designed to succeed all other PCI bus slots and AGP, and it is not backward compatible with standard PCI because the architecture is very different. There are four different slot sizes in PCI Express. There's PCI Express by one, four, 8 and 16. PCIe by 1 has one lane for data. A lane has four wires, two for sending and two for receiving. PCIe by 4 has four lanes. PCIe by 8 has eight lanes. And the fastest slot is PCIe by 16, which has 16 lanes and PCIe by 16 has succeeded the AGP slot for the video card. And there is also the PCI X slot, where the X stands for extended. The PCI X slot is basically an extension of the old standard PCI slot, and it's almost twice the length of a standard PCI slot. The PCI X is a 64-bit bus, and it is backward compatible with the standard PCI slot. It was mainly designed to work with servers and high-speed computers. There is also the mini PCI slot, and this is what is used in laptops. It is approximately one quarter the length of a standard PCI slot. The mini PCI slot is a subset of the standard PCI bus but it's a lot smaller. Now you can insert a regular PCI card into a mini PCI slot, but you would have to use a mini PCI to PCI converter. The mini PCI is a 32-bit, 33 megahertz bus. Typically located at the bottom right-hand corner of the motherboard, you'll find what's called the front panel connector. 
and this is where you would plug in wires that connect to items that are in the front bezel of the computer case. For instance, there is the power button connector, and this turns the computer on or off. There is also the power LED, which indicates when the computer is on or off or in standby mode. There is also the hard drive LED, which indicates when there is hard drive activity. We also have the reset switch, which restarts the computer by doing a hard boot. There is also a speaker connector, which is used to plug in the internal speaker of the computer. Now, oftentimes the front panel connector will be color coded as you see here. And this is to help identify where the wires connect, to which makes knowing where to connect the wires a lot easier. Most computers today will have certain common connections on the front panel of the computer for easier access. For example, you may find some USB ports in the front, and you may find some audio ports, one for headphones or speakers and another one for a microphone. Additionally, on the front panel, you will see the power button, and this is for turning on and off the computer. You will also see a reset button, and this is for doing a hard reboot. We also have a drive activity light. Now this light blinks when there is activity in the computer. In other words, when the hard drive is being accessed. BIOS stands for Basic Input-Output System. The BIOS is software that is built into the motherboard that initializes the computer's peripherals as the computer is being booted. Some of these peripherals include the keyboard, mouse, video card, optical drives, and so on. And after it initializes the peripherals, it then searches for a boot device like an optical drive or a hard drive to boot software or to boot an operating system. The BIOS software is stored on the BIOS chip on the motherboard. The BIOS chip is non-volatile, which means that the software and settings are retained even after the power is turned off. On modern computers, the BIOS is stored on flash memory chips, which makes the BIOS capable of being updated using a special program. Some popular vendors of BIOS software are American Megatrends and Phoenix Technologies. After a computer is turned off, and if the power cable is unplugged, the computer needs to maintain certain settings, such as the date and time, and hardware settings. And these settings are stored on the motherboard in a special chip called a CMOS chip. CMOS stands for Complementary Metal Oxide Semiconductor. And for the CMOS chip to maintain these settings, it needs a battery. This battery is called the CMOS battery. The CMOS battery is a small button cell battery that can be seen on the surface of the motherboard and is usually located on the bottom right hand corner. The CMOS battery is basically the same type that is typically used in wristwatches. When you turn on a computer, the computer does what's called a power on self test or POST, which is run by the BIOS. It tests the computer to make sure all the requirements are met and the hardware is working correctly before continuing. After post has passed, the BIOS searches for something to boot from, such as an operating system, which is typically loaded on the hard drive. But the computer doesn't necessarily have to boot to an operating system. It can also boot from other things such as a CD or DVD, floppy disk, or USB flash drive, just as long as those things have the necessary boot files on them. How the BIOS determines which device to boot from depends on the boot order in the CMOS settings. And in the CMOS settings, you can make changes in the priority boot sequence. So for instance, if the CD or DVD drive is set as the first boot device, then the BIOS would check that first and look for software to boot from. 
If it doesn't find anything, it will move on to the second device on the list and check that next. And it will continue down the list until it finds something to boot from. But you can change the boot priority in CMOS in any order you choose. And once you make the change, you just save the settings, and the next time you reboot the computer, the settings will take effect. Now, there are certain things you can do while you're in the BIOS. For instance, you can set the date and time. The date and time should be accurate because the operating system does reference it. Other things you can do in a BIOS are enable or disable certain devices. For example, if your motherboard has a built-in video network or sound card, you can disable these devices in the BIOS to save resources if you're not using them. But, you only want to disable these if your motherboard already has the adapter cards installed on the motherboard that already give you these capabilities. The BIOS also allows you to modify the CPU clock speed by either increasing the clock speed to make the computer run faster, which as a result will increase the temperature, or by reducing the clock speed, which will make the computer run slower, but will lower the temperature of the CPU. This could be especially useful if your computer is having overheating issues. Speaking of temperature, the BIOS can also monitor the temperature of the CPU. The BIOS has a built-in safety mechanism that if the CPU reaches a certain temperature threshold, will automatically shut down the computer. Or if it detects that the CPU fan is not spinning, It'll also shut down the computer to prevent damage to the CPU from overheating. But these temperature thresholds can be modified in the BIOS if you want to, by either increasing or decreasing the temperature threshold. In the BIOS, you can also modify the fan speeds of the computer. and enable or disable virtualization as well. Virtualization is a technology that enables your computer to run multiple operating systems in different partitions. The operating systems are not actual, but they are virtual. So if your computer is preventing you from installing or running virtualization software, it could be that virtualization is disabled in the BIOS. One way to protect your computer from unauthorized users is by using password protection in the BIOS. Using a BIOS password not only prevents changes to the BIOS settings, but it also prevents the system from booting. A user cannot boot the computer or make any changes in the BIOS without the BIOS password. When you turn on a computer, the computer does what is called a power-on self-test or POST. It tests the computer to make sure all the requirements are met and that the hardware is working correctly before starting the operating system. If the computer passes the test, the internal speaker will make a short single beep, which indicates that the computer has passed the test and is booting up normally. However, if there's no beep or if there are multiple beeps, then that means that the computer has failed the test and something is wrong, and the computer needs further troubleshooting to find out what the problem is. Whether there are no beeps or multiple beeps, the computer will generate this beep code to help you pinpoint the problem. For instance, if the computer generates three long beeps, then that could indicate a keyboard error. Or, if the computer generates a continuous short beep, then that could indicate a problem with a memory module. Whatever BIOS is installed on a computer's motherboard, you can always refer to the manufacturer's documentation to find a list of beep codes and what they mean. Some BIOS systems have an intrusion detection feature.
This feature detects if the computer case has been opened and alerts the user. Some computers, especially laptops, can be equipped with LoJack, which is a service that can locate your computer if it has been stolen. A newer type of BIOS is called UEFI. UEFI stands for Unified Extensible Firmware Interface. Now most, if not all new motherboards are shipped with this newer type of BIOS. UEFI has several advantages over the old BIOS. And the first and most obvious, just by looking at it, is that it has a user-friendly graphical user interface that supports different colors and even animations, whereas the old BIOS has your typical blue screen that resembles the Windows blue screen of death. UEFI can also recognize larger hard drives, and you can even use a mouse while you're in the UEFI interface, as compared to the old BIOS, where mouse support was not even available, and you had to use your keyboard only. UEFI also has a built-in feature called Secure Boot, and Secure Boot stops any digitally unsigned drivers from loading, and it helps to stop malicious software such as rootkits. This video is part of our full CompTIA A-plus course, which can be found in the description.